Cool. Dual stream. It's gonna pick it up. That's weird. There we go. Let's drop some of these in Velia. events or anything I care about finishing. How many Lego books do I have? Oh, I have 35 Lego books. Oh, wow. I didn't realize I had that many. Shit. Oh, man. Maybe I need to build Rathalos for Hydra now. I'm trying to make a more auto-friendly hard or uh, nightmare Hydra team which means probably retiring my Quintus because he's too manual. I'm tired of playing like three hours of Hydra. I got my brutal and hard into a good spot, but Nightmare is still like really underperforms if I don't play it on manual. Okay. Um, I need to go to Pit of Undying. Actually, you know what? Let me go collect my... Boss Rush Rewards. What's up, Nathan? What's up, bye? How are you? I'm doing well, man. We just switched over to, to the hybrid stream, but we had a great run in Live Arena today. I gained, like, 30-plus points, which means we won, like, five more than we lost. Out of like 20, 15, 20, something like that. So it's a good run. The newer streaming, he was just watching Cruise and play live read on Doc Moreau's account. Oh, nice. On his YouTube channel, I assume. I think, I think Cruisen's my new personal goal to pass his, his, not Doc Moreau, his main account. His main account is like, Hundred points higher than my, than mine. In in terms of writing, Gizmax an arena boss. Yeah, he's he's pretty good in live arena. His ability to cut through um, stone skin is really nice. Very polymorph susceptible, though. Oops, I messed that up. I'm gonna need one stack over now. HP burn is strong, plus a second form, ignore block damage, is a good counter to Siegfried. Oh, I didn't even think about that. The problem is, well, actually, here, let me look at his second form. Siegfried prevents damage with his passive and then puts up ignore a block damage. So you can't kill him on the first kill unless you ignore the passives with like Narcis or something. Um, it's twice. Place the pain link on a target for two turns. This debuff cannot be removed, resisted, or blocked. When calculating the damage inflicted by pain length, the attacker's skill and multipliers reflect the damage inflicted by pain length. Deal with ignore 100% of the target's defense. It's not unkillable on the chain for two turns. Places an ally protection. 
Tax one enemy, jam additional sleep, lower fifty percent. All tax on enemies instead. Increase the duration of two random buffs on the target. Attacking all enemies increases the duration of two random debuffs on all enemies by one turn instead. Cannot be resisted. This attack is critical. Uh, you said in his second form? We ignore 15% of the target's defense of this champion or the target's HP is equal to or greater than 50%. If this champion's HP or the target's HP is less than 50%, we'll ignore 25% of the target's defense. Instead, we'll also ignore block damage and shield buffs when attacking enemies under HP burn. Um... What's up jkl dog we eating ice cream maybe maybe what he's doing is not hitting twice he gizmac has this grants an extra turn if it kills an enemy so it could be that he's nuking the enemy team granting an extra turn and then cutting through the h the block damage with his passive all of his abilities ignore block damage if the enemy is under HP burn. So he, he puts up HP burn with his passive on his first turn. He swaps to his second form. He nukes the enemy team. And then as long as he kills anyone on the enemy team, then he can kill the Siegfried through the Siegfried passive. I could see that working. But he has to kill someone else on the team. Seeing Gizmak take three turns in a row, that mythical is cracked. Three turns in a row. How would he do that? Refresh accessory? I think the only way he could do that is if he got a refresh accessory. Like Georgia. Georgia gets refresh accessories, goes A3, refresh, A3 again, and then A2, which is fun. Uh, HP burn goes through stone skin as well. Very underrated for PvP, amazing for Hydra. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is... You need like HP Vern activators to actually do anything with the the HP Vern going through the stone skin, but yeah, it's good. Part of me thinks like I should build um, Sulfurion as like a super fast burner plus um, plus what's it called? Turn meter booster. Plus revive. You more often not didn't get polymorph from Live Arena. Yeah, I mean polymorph is really annoying, but it's also a little overrated. The thing I've really just started to accept in Live Arena is that you you really have to treat live arena like you treat poker you know you don't play poker trying to win every single hand your goal is to win more hands than you lose <laughs> it's not to win every single hand you just gotta take like there's so much rng involved that you just gotta position yourself to have the best possible chance of winning which is not going to be the same as winning every fight it's not like classic arena where you go in and you try to win every single fight like you just gotta Except that sometimes you're just going to have to take risks and hope for the best. And it's all about just trying to balance it in your favor. He's facing a bunch of high-end IPR guys tonight and mad players in live arena. Nice. Is Reblath totally dead now with the Blackstone changes? Um, kinda. I mean, Militia just devours for more. So it makes sense to do that instead. It's really annoying. I hope they will fix Reblath because it's a lot more obnoxious to use Militia than Reblath since the vendor is further away and can't cleanse. But Armand's Galath here, Crixia, CFC, Seek Friend. Just pick these five and you're fine. <laughs> yeah. 
think the one way they can fix polymorphs is to get rid of it as a blessing instead of taking it out of the game completely, turn it into a gear set. Uh, I mean... I think um, Polymorph should be resistible at all levels, even 6-star. I think that would help. Um, I do think Polymorph needs to exist, otherwise debuffs are way too strong. Probably is too far gone at this point, all the Krakens would cry if they ever tried to take it away. A lot of people would, for sure. Made it too strong to begin with. They need to do a few things. One, the uh, the act. Oops, I just took out all of my mem frags. It's not what I meant to do. The actual debuff is way too strong. So they need to. I think they need to keep. I think it's fine if. Well, there's a few things they could do. One, don't have it interrupt your abilities. Have it go off and have it be punished, but. If it if you land it, it goes on everyone. You know what I mean? Like your ability doesn't get interrupted midway through. So if you land up, if you throw out bombs on the whole team and the first one polymorphs you, the still you still get bombs on the rest of the team. That would be a big change to make it better, like more balanced. Another thing they could do is they need to make it less punishing. So it doesn't need to last for two turns and it doesn't need to lower your speed to 150. It should keep your speed the same. Um, and your turn meter the same, although most of the time you're going to have no turn meter anyway since you just took a turn. And it should... And it should only last one turn, and then it would be a lot more balanced. Imagine if a champ could buff strip, damage, mitigate, do 50% damage, lower to speed to 50, and two turns duration. Yeah. That's the problem, is it's just too strong of a, of a debuff. Especially when it lands on, like, your nukers or something. Like, it's one thing if it lands on a support, like Crixia. It's like, okay. You know, fine. But when you use it on, like, with, when it lands on, like, your Taurus or your Harima or your Saltus or whatever, and you, you basically instant lost the fight because your nukers are never going to be able to get a turn, that's extremely egregious. What's up, noodles? Do you see where they are going to nerf Iron Twins and Shogun? Yeah, I did see that. I mean, I feel like at this point in the game, like, th that content is so easy if you're even, like, mid-game level. I don't know. I guess, um... Shogun's is easy, no matter what, if you just use my Paragon Cheese team. If you... Uh, the... Sand Devil kind of requires very specific champions, so that's pretty annoying. And then Iron Twins is whatever. Poly is an issue for me with seeing how strong it is. Uh, Kron for Pendebo or stick to just hammers? Definitely hammers. Hammers are way better. How's the hammer market? I haven't looked today. Are they still going up? Yeah, there's still... There's a little bit more than yesterday. I don't know, accuracy on Ragash and Staltus. Why even use Ragash if you don't have accuracy on him? Like, at least a little bit of accuracy. I haven't used Ragash in a fight in so long. I never even think to use him anymore.
Do you think it's better, Ragash or Staltus? For Live Arena, I think Staltus is way better. Apparently, I'm the only one. People love Ragash, but I think... I think... Um... I think Staltus is way better for Live Arena. For Classic Arena, where you can guarantee that you have an increased defense, I think Ragash is fine, but the count kind of outgrew, outgrew Staltus Ragash. I don't think you'd use Staltus as much if you didn't have six star. Uh, it's not just the six star. It's the fact that I can run nine piece Slayer because I got three Banner Lord accessories, but I'm not actually convinced that's true. I think Saltus is one of the best AoE nukers. Like he's he's one of your best like generic AoE nukers. Yeah, pretty much period. Especially against like UDK teams and stuff. He can hit hard. He he hits hard, but he also can survive. He's like, especially a lot of times it's not like you need to survive. Like, yeah, sure. He's not going to survive a Taurus nuke with like everything on them. But a lot of times that's not what you need to survive. You need to survive A1s, for example. Like suppose I'm running against a Taurus Marichka team and I, and they ban my lockout, right? Or they don't ban my lockout. They ban something else. So then I have a lockout. If I'm running a Trenda or, uh, you know, a squishy champion or something, the Nuker's just going to die to the Taurus and Marichka coming in with A1s. But Staltus is sitting there. He just gave himself a fat increased defense. He's sitting there with 70,000 health and, you know, 7,000 defense. He's not going to die to A1s like, a, you know, a squishy Nuker would. So I, I honestly think he's one of the best, like, generic AoE Nukers for Librarina. And you can bring him into any team and you don't need to have any sort of like increased attack or increased defense. Like that makes a huge difference. If I, I'm using Staltus actually more than ever because I'm running a lot of Armand's Kaja Warlord. When I pick first and I get Armand's and then I pick Kaja next and then it's very clear to me that they're not going to go with a go first team and I know I'm going to go first no matter what. I can end up just picking Warlord, running Kaja Warlord, um, Armands, but there's a possibility that they ban the Kaja. So I need nukers who aren't going to die super easily, right? Because if they ban the the Kaja, then that means they're getting locked out and they're getting Armands. So I need a champion that's not going to die to you know a pole or a stone skin nuker that a ones it. So Staltus is the perfect go to for that, uh, and he. There's no increased defense or increased attack in that whole squad. So the fact that he can self-buff his damage is huge. I, I really think Saltus is significantly better than Ragash and significantly underrated. In live arena, in live. I think the people who love Ragash are a holdover from Classic who don't appreciate how valuable having your own self-buffing damage ability is. Doc Moreau's Queen Eva has a beast. She's a good Harima counter. I've seen a one-shot some well-built Harimas. Yeah. Queen Eva's just under 10k attack. That's the thing about Queen Eva is the, the counter to Harima is to just do a shit ton of damage without ignoring defense. And Queen Eva does that and she ignores defense. So, like, the... the you can think like, oh, the Queen Eva or the Harima is going to shut down the Queen Eva's passive, so she's not going to be as good. But it's like, no, it doesn't actually matter because she hits so friggin' hard regardless. Like she's got like a seven multiplier on her a uh, on her nuke before you even consider the fact that it ignores defense. And so that's just huge. And she's the right affinity. So yeah, I mean, I could see her being an excellent Harima counter. Is the hardest hitting champ now? Probably, yeah. I mean, maybe not like, maybe Siegfried is harder, but. <laughs> Pulled Salt is going for Ragash. I got Ragash on my ult. Yeah, which one do you like better? Versus a three turn cooldown as well, so better than Blood Gorge. Yeah, Blood Gorge. Um... 
I don't know. He's got some problems. The nice thing about Blood Gorge, though, is he has 100% ignore defense, not 50%, which means you can build him in Stone Skin without losing any damage. I think I might actually build my Blood Gorged um, out in the next free regear because I think Blood Gorge is actually a really good counter to Narcis and um, and Korra. Because a lot of people will try and counter Lockout with Narcis and Korra. And then if I just run Blood Gorge and block revive the Narcis and ban their other nuker, that can be a really good option. But Blood Gorge has really bad multipliers, so you really need him to crank the gear to kill a Narcis because the counter to Blood Gorge is really high HP. And obviously Narcis is an HP based champion. But if I built him out like as well as possible, I could probably get him to hit for like 150k. Which is going to kill a Narcis. Bit surprised you haven't used Valken in ages. It's true. I haven't used Valken in a long time. Maybe I should. Maybe I should consider Valken in against some of these. Um, and Korra Narcis teams. The problem is. Yeah, I don't know. You know what would be actually kind of interesting? <laughs> is to use Valkanen to kill the shield on the Kaja and then revive the Kaja with the Arbiter. Oh, but the Arbiter wouldn't have the Terminator boost follow-up. I was playing Live Arena earlier on my account. One-shot Mesomel through Stone Skin with my Queen Eva. Oh, I believe that. I one-shot Wukong through Stone Skin with my um, Foley, and Foley doesn't hit nearly as hard as Queen Eva. It's actually not that hard to kill nukers through stone skin. Okay, that's not fair. I don't one shot the Foley. I use Georgid A2 on the Foley or on the Wukong and then kill it. So maybe that's not fair. But moral of the story is, yeah, it's actually surprisingly not that hard to kill squishy nukers through stone skin. Okay. DBS champs have low HP, so low stone skin shields. Yeah. <laughs> I think stone skin nukers works best on nukers that are kind of tanky and nukers where a debuff is the main counter. So it works really well on Rotos, for example, because uh, the way you counter Rotos is with like something like Rondo where you block the passives. I wonder if like... Narcis probably can't do it. I don't know. I wonder if a Narcis with if there was like a small or like a bolster on a Rotos, if a Narcis could one shot a Rotos through Stone Skin, maybe. Thing is, Rotos is also kind of a he's a little bit of an HP champ, even though he has really low base HP. People build a lot of flat HP on him because it buffs his damage. So he tends to be tankier even without his passive than like a Georgit or something. I guess we can hit these. Whoops. Your Narcissus needs a lot of love. Yeah. He his his build is his build has will be really good, but like half of it's not ascended because I'm saving all my oil for the Marius missions. But I'm gonna pop a big energy pack on in the next CVC and I'm gonna farm a ton of oil. And then that's gonna go into Narcis. The other issue I have is I kinda don't want to spend oil on a lot of Narcis gear because it's not permanent. Because I'm gonna rebuild him when the next free regear event happens. You should need to rock all of weak Narcis. Y'all need to step up, give him some attention. I I kinda don't like Narcis that much, to be honest. I feel like half the time I pick Narcis, I'm picking Narcis to stop my opponent from having Narcis. Narcis does really well against like bolster or like teams that he kind of works better as a go second champion than a go first champion. And that's why I put him in stone skin because I am using him for that more, but I barely pick him. I mean, he's just not that good in the kind of teams that I run. 
He doesn't hit very hard without if there's no shields on the enemy team. Do you actually like Fatalis more than him? Um, no. I don't know. 25 bill pen ruins. I know, man. He's good, but overrated. I feel the same way if I don't pick up my opponent well. Yeah, I'd feel less threatened by Nar Narcees, or I will feel less threatened by Narcees when I get the divine life off my Kaja. And mostly people use Narcees and Korra to counter my Warlord. So I need to pick him to stop them from doing that. But he's he's a he's I think Narcees is a good counter pick. And the problem is is that I usually he's a counter pick to the the teams that I run, not the teams that I fight against. Like he's a counter pick to speed lockout teams and I'm running speed lockout. So I don't need him for me, but I need but he's also really good against me. I was going to need to set up his bit unfortunate as well. He'd be more like a Blood Gorge, but Void, I guess that's why they did that. Um, yeah, he's kind of like Valkanen. Or he's kind of like Blood Gorge. He hits a lot harder than Blood Gorge does. He has crazy multipliers on his nuke. Why'd I come over here? For the Tungrad necklaces? Is that it? No, because I needed a cleanse. No, wait. No, I didn't. I don't know why I came down here. I wish they would change Live Arena to where you can ban enemy champs first so they can't use them before picking them. No, that would be terrible. Unless you gave... You'd have to give people, like, a shit ton of bans. No, I don't like that at all, actually. That would be, that would be dog shit. <laughs> Especially for non like Krakens who have a limited roster. All your key champs get banned. And if you only let people ban one, then it's basically pointless. I don't like anything that requires setup for PvP. It's fine in classic, it's just hard in, in live. Man, they're going to drop the free re-gearing event while I'm on out of town for like two days. That's going to suck. So I really want to take advantage of it, but I feel like I'm not going to be able to. Classic is a meme. That's true. What's up, D-Warrior? All right, there we go. Got another one, 10 stack. Um, how many more stacks can I store? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Great Hobby Max the CVC. Nice. You have options like Epic only, like Centranos. For PvP? Yeah, that would be fantastic. They need to start doing like seasons. Um, like PvP seasons with limitations. Just like um, if you look at Pokemon Go, Pokemon Go has like a PvP system. And, you know, it's kind of a gotcha, similar to Raid. Except for you just have to walk around to get the different stuff. Um, but they'll have like a PvP season where it's like, oh, you can only use this champions that are this level of power or less and have these conditions on them. And then that'll be there for like a month or two or whatever, however their duration, long their duration is. And then 
you know, it'll move on and it'll have a different season with like a different limitation. So in raid, it would be like, you can only use rares of the, you know, Nairijian or faction or whatever, Nairijian Union faction for two months or a month. No harm on Sundays. Uh, thank you for that. Whoever followed the channel, I missed it. God, I should probably just try and do this. Um, champ training. Wait, is this like a upgrade warriors and earn Ilsinia and Aishma? How do you earn? How do you earn these champions? What's it talking about? This is so confusing to me. Oh, is it a global leader leaderboard thing? Your tournament group hasn't finished yet? If you hit first, then you get them. If you already have them, can't get them. Did they announce this? Wait, so if I get first place, I get... If you have Void Shard, then you already have both. But I don't have both. Oh, wait, I do. That's Elsinia. Listen to Nishma. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Nancy for Profit going to go extinct? <sighs> I mean, it depends. It's definitely not going to be good. Like, with the Merchant Ring, I can enhance, enhance for Profit doing, like, lame shit. Like, yeah, I'm just going to... Hold on. I'm just going to commit to doing this tournament to get the Legendary Book. Just because I... All of my food is already leveled up. And you know me, I farm all my dungeons of food and stuff, so I think it's worth it to just commit to this. Plus, we need to level stuff for Centronos anyway. Um, you know, there's gonna be some like piddly stuff enhancing for profit for me, like, you know, low level accessories. But pen accessories are bust, and pen accessories were the major thing that you made money on before. Now, there might become a day where, um, where Debos get so cheap and so common that you can actually buy the bases and enhance them for profit, but as of now, it's pretty pretty rip I need the epic because I want to use a second copy but I'm not participating in that I mean I'm like I actually don't mind doing the champ training like just independently even if I don't win and get the champion I can't I can't get the champion can't win and get the champion but I'm actually okay with that just because I have so much food I need to level regardless but I just need an excuse to level stuff
Nice, got the black star. So annoying. I don't want the plus 15. Using Razzle and 33 is hilarious to me. I don't know why. Yeah. He's not a, the worst BBP champion in the world. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot to check my Forge Pass. Use a spirit champion in live arena. Or not live arena, classic arena. Killing me, Black Spirit. 6,700 attack, 284 crit damage at 244 speed and lethal. Not too shabby. It's so annoying. God, I wish they could turn that sound off. It's just so frustrating that we have to use militias instead of reblath. Re militias so much worse. Quality of life. speed ASAP I lose a lot of attack need better gear mm. do I spend all my essence for a four star seer soul I mean it depends on how you like to play the game I personally I can't even remember the last time I used seer for anything because I do all of my dungeon farming with food and non seer comps uh, but if you're one of those people that's very pressed for time and you need to run everything fast seer is one way to do that I think the only thing I actually use Seer for is Faction Wars. Okay, I got the 47. Free chat, I'll take it. Another one ten stack. I use Armand's A3 mainly just for his buff strip. This dude's so busted, it's insane. You know, they were laughing the office and they cooked up this dude for the fusion. Dude, he's so overpowered. He's the best champion in the game. It's not even close. 
and it just keeps going. Like his kit, his A1 like locks you out. Like really? You needed a lockout on the A1? You need an insane passive. You need like every one of his abilities is nuts. Like his A2 ability alone makes him a god tier champion. And then he has his A3 and his A1 and his passive, which also all make him insane. It's like, what the hell? I was using Seer everywhere, but Faction Wars, she was reading my buffs and I died. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I just, I farm all of my stuff with food. So I don't run Seer comps for anything. Love using him in Centranos? Yeah. I mean, he just trivializes every piece of content. Well, I guess not bosses. Bosses that can't have their turn meter reduced or be polymorph. But. Yeah, he's completely broken. Lil Bum124, thank you for the follow. People don't talk about his pass enough and the fact that his A1 does a one turn increase, it's dumb. Oh yeah, I've definitely lost fights because of the Armands. I locked the Armands out, but then his A1 shut down a critical ability on one of my nukers and I lost the fight because of it. His A1 is also super good. The thing is, is like, it wouldn't even be that hard to balance him. It's not like they even need to do anything. He just needs longer cooldowns. His A... Two ability really needs to be on a minimum four, but probably even five turn cooldown. Because it's effectively a one turn less than it actually is. Because once you steal the whole turn meter from the enemy, you get to take another turn. And then the three turn, like, it just, it comes back so fast, even if you try and use lockout. I was just soloing the Siffy Rotos waves and Doom Towers and nuts, yeah. <coughs> His busted ability should be both be five turns. Yeah. Think about how power crept like Rosin is. Rosin has a single full turn meter de depletion on a five turn cooldown. Armand's does a complete turn meter reduction steal and stun on a three turn cooldown. What the hell? He's cons constantly 3% my lockout. Yeah. Ooh, got the try. Nice. Rosin drops trim meter on like a five turn cooldown or something and stuns 100%. Rosin doesn't stun. Probably the Rosin, by the time you get him, you'll like, most likely have two other decent Legos, if not more. Yeah. Thing is, is Rosin used to actually be good. To be fair, it wasn't really for his turn meter reduction. It was mostly for his decreased defense weaken, but still. I actually still don't hate Rosin. I use him in, like, Faction Wars and... He ends up becoming clutch in a few like Centrano stages and things. Runs A2 and A1 Giant Slayer is still good in Clan Boss, but that's about it. Yeah. It's good arena back in the day if you build them with. Um, fast with accuracy. 
Yeah. You should buff him. It'd be fun to use Rosin if if it was like if they made his A2 like an AoE. Or just gave him like good multipliers. I don't even know what his multipliers are. Buffed his base stats. That's part of the problem. Is his base stats are stupid low. 91 base speed. That's crazy slow. Uh yeah, I mean I guess his. Damn, his. His A3 actually has a decent multipliers. It's like a 5.2. If they made his his A2 an AoE, and they reduced the cooldown by one on his A3, I think he'd be a really cool champion. Hansing sucks, but hey, using the new anvil, I got back-to-back -back guaranteed Fallen God from base to try. <laughs> Thank God for the new system. Still in your faction war, swing one team to this day, but mostly since I can't be asked of it. Yeah, all uh, he's in my faction war too, but all my faction war teams are like just whatever random garbage I happen to have leveled up. Like, I don't really care about optimizing faction wars when it's such a kind of a relevant part. Even if you have a fairly slow team, it's not like it spends that much time in Faction Wars. Is, with the guaranteed system, is there a new way to easily make fail stacks? No, it doesn't really change that much. It makes fail stacking a little more efficient because you get these random like free duo and try and tets that you can use to make fail stacks. But in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really make that much of a difference for fail stacking. Um, it's 12 for pry, 15 for duo, and 20 for try. Failed so much that I was able to oh, get guaranteed pride, guaranteed duo, guaranteed try, but at least I got it. Just gotta get my other pieces back to duo. You guys got me curious. I don't know what my. Let me check my pity. Do you think they counted since your last success when they did the pity on the accessories? I have no idea what my anvils are on, on all of these like tet to pen accessories. Uh, oh, do I even have any tets to check with? Not really. I think the Tet Ruins is like the only one I have. Three out of 20. Okay, so they they must not... Well, actually, I don't even know. I don't know how much enhancing I've done this year. I have to check the other ones when we eventually make Tets.
Which class is also is the easiest to play and also real good at for crypt with 301, 401. I don't know if Awakened Guardian is to play here. Um, I don't know how Awakened Guardian is for crypt. <coughs> uh, I hear good things about witch. Suck lawn, yeah, suck lawn probably. Although I don't know how good suck lawn is at crypts to be honest. She might be kind of squishy. I'm sure she's good, but I don't know how like lazy she is. I use all kind of elixirs, but somehow I still get blasted. Well, part of doing crypt is making sure you keep an eye out for the um, the dark knight. Because that mob in particular is like cracked out and will do an insane amount of damage. So you got to like make sure it spawns at a specific point in the rotation. And you got to watch out for when it spawns. And make sure you focus it down and also don't let it back attack you or anything. Might need to start buying some more base accessories. Oh, we got a lot of Voltaras, though. Enhancing sucks after the pity system. It's not really the pity system that killed enhancing. It's everything that Pearl Abyss has done in the last three or four months. Such as buffing the Debo drop rates, adding the hammers. They basically, the short answer is like they pushed everyone into using Debos instead of the other accessories. And so all the other accessories are, like, worth nothing now. Like, all the pen accessories lose money. There's no pen accessories other than Debos that are worth... And Debos aren't worth either, because they're better to sell at Ted. But in theory, you could make profit on pen. Anyway, not the point. There's basically no accessories that are actually worth enhancing to pen anymore. And that was the main moneymaker before. So fucked up with Tungra Heads. Rings were 88 build pre order, now they're down to 60. I mean, they were higher than 88. They were going for like well over 100, I think, before they initially buffed the accessories. All the accessories are worth like half, except for eyes, which are worth like a third of what they were before the Jatina update. I think this is. Is this. When did Jatina hit? I think this is even before. I thought they were around like 70 before. But maybe this is. Maybe 58. Look at this, ogres. I mean, they're in the 30s. It's wild. How much money you got right now? Uh, let's see. Oh, hey, look. Got to update our pre-orders. 6.49 trillion. Oh, is that a new record? Damn. Six point four nine trillion. Holy shit, you got the most in BDL? I think so. I think... I think when I'm ready to start going hard on BDO... Or not... Me going hard is a little optimistic. But I think when I'm ready to start playing BDO... Heavily again... I think I'm going to go on a life skill arc. I think I'm going to go for the life skill icon. And just focus on that. And then do a little enhancing here and there when I feel like it. You're actually the richest in the game? I think so, yeah.
hilarious grats. Thank you. I need to do some math later. Figure out what I'm going to do with my big stacks. Should probably figure that out sooner or later because if it's falling or if it's um, Tet Fallen Gods, I'm going to need to start moving those early since they're not exactly a high volume item. What kind of fail stacks would you use a pen on those accessories that heavily dropped in price? Debos? Uh, probably like 270, 280. Jesus, we're going to hit the uh, anvil here in a second. Baltara? Oh, you shouldn't make a Baltara. You shouldn't make any pen accessories other than Debos. Everything else, if you want it, buy it, but they're all worth so little. Okay, what do we want to make next? I kind of got most of my accessories to try. Oh, wait a minute. I needed to do Pit of Undying and... Uh, Black Shrine. Oh, hey, what did we get? Is that a Gearins? Or, oh, no, it's the Bongwa. What's this thing worth? Oh, 300 mil. Oh yeah, they merged all the traces. Wait, why do I still have Trace of Ascension? Oh, exchange with Black Spirit for Trace of Nature. Is it better to buy Tet Debos or upgrading them for EU players? Uh, I mean, it's better to upgrade them, but you have to grind to get the bases because they're sold out. Let's go do pit. Bottleneck is just bases? Yeah. Enhancing Debos to Ted is very, very good. It's probably the best money you can make in the game in terms of grinding is to get bases. There are grind spots that drop the bases and take them up to Ted and sell them. I mean, it's less true than it was when they were, you know, 100 bill instead of 65. But still, it's still very good. 
So obviously making them yourself is even better, or like making them for your personal use is even better because you don't pay the tax when you sell it, so. But it's kind of a, not really a fair comparison. Like the question should be, is it better to grind X spot where I make X amount of money or grind Y spot where I make Y amount of money and get base depots? Not, is it better to make or not make as if that's just like a choice that doesn't have any, that you can just make. I made one myself and the second one I made broke. Did you click it without crons? Real question is, do you grind the solo debit earring spots to enhance the tet or grind other devil spots to enhance the solo tet and buy tet earring? Yeah, I mean, the the solo earring spots are just trash. And the thing is, is like the earring is becoming one of the cheapest debos because people like grinding Olins. I should really just memorize the Durin animations so I don't have to like look at my chart every time. Sure, are you interested in getting Pit of a Nine? I mostly exchange it for Mass Appear Magic, but I have more than I'm ever going to need. Right, let's see. Right up, left down. Right hand up is a stun, left hand down is a knockdown. Awesome. Hold on, let me finish. I want a plus 12 speed boot and all champs, long-term goal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, technically you get more stats with non-speed than speed. Like ideally you build your champs. Part of the reason why you want to roll speed on all your gear is so that you don't have to roll or run speed boots if you can avoid it. Cause you get more stats from other things. So I don't know necessarily if you should have a goal of running plus 12 speed on everything. This fight before I can read chat. Dude, I literally didn't even hit him. He just goes straight back into this animation. It's so dumb.
so obnoxious how this is just like all an iframe. Like, when are you going to let me actually hit the damn dude? There we go. Jesus. Uh, for supports, I started sending one star at 12 before building them up or rolling up, trying to for speed ascension right away. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what you want to do. That's why they give you so much more oil for tier one than anything else when you're doing sand devil 25 it's because back in the day before they did that we used to have to farm a bunch of sand devil seven which was actually the best stage for dropping tier one oil because you want to just like check lots and lots and lots of things i think the dust gave people the impression that like you could just pick your ascensions no problem on all your gear and to be honest, that's not true at all. It's so expensive to re-roll. Like, is that boss mechanic? Durin or uh, the other one? So, yeah, I've been coming... <clears throat> I've been becoming a lot more... Like, oh, just checking ascensions and having that impact whether or not i actually keep the gear just like it used to be but now more like now i continue to do that i didn't just decide like oh there's dust i don't need to worry if it doesn't roll the right ascension because like no if it's not a really good piece and it doesn't roll the right ascension in the bin the minotaur looking thing oh i think that was um i think that was durin the mechanics of the boss is basically like he does certain abilities and then based on what abilities he does, you have to counter with specific CCs. He'll try and CC you and then you have to mirror the CCs back at him. But you can just dodge his attacks and then if you know the animations, you know what CC you're supposed to do back. Oh, uh, no, the other one might be... Um, why can't I think of his name right now? I can't. I can't remember. I can't remember what his name is. But his mechanic is after you get him to a certain level of HP, he starts doing this attack, and you need to hit him in the back with a CC or a knockdown or a knockback. I think it is to interrupt him, and you have to do that like five times. Otherwise, he'll go into this, like, super berserk mode, overpowered phase that'll, like, one-shot you. I need buffs. I need to pop. When we're critical over my DPS champs and supports for my sports, really just do HP chess gloves with HP subs. Most of my sports are in regen. Yeah, I mean, for PvE especially, the supports don't really matter. As long as they're not dying. Um, reflex can be really nice. To reset their cooldowns. Relentless can also be good. I used to run a lot of supports in Relentless, but now in the current iteration of Hydra... You kind of want to take less turns on your supports so that you don't hit the turn limit as early and can get more damage from the nukers. The fact that your Kaja's 455 speed with nearly 100k HP is wild. Yeah, she's not even in HP... Um, She's not even in HP gloves. She's in like flat stat gloves. Or crit damage? No, flat stat, I think. I can't remember. She does have an HP chest, which is nice. Someday I'll get a try speed roll in speed or protection set with a defense or HP main stat. I also use uh, the one gear set, Zealot, that just reworked my unit to get decreased cooldown. Uh, not Zeal, it's the other one. Impact or whatever it is, can't remember. Yeah, that one's going to be a lot more interesting now that it's a two-piece. Impulse. Yeah, that's what it is. The 
Reflex plus Impulse plus Triple Refresh would be nutty. That would might be better than Merciless Reflex plus Refresh. Check the numbers to verify. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Staff uses the ladder, but you can only get one refresh accessory at like 5% chance. I only like double or better refresh. I feel like it's just one of those things like you get as much as you reasonably can. longer do we have in Chris City? Two weeks and five days. Yeah, they're definitely going to do the free thing when I'm on my birthday trip. Bummer. How much time do I have left on my traveler's map? 16 minutes. Okay, we got plenty. Just got back from vacation here going on another trip. I mean, we're just going to the beach for like two nights. For my 35th birthday with my family. Beach is like two hours from my house. Romantic shit. <laughs> oh my god, no, don't knock me down. This is gonna be a bad time. Oh well. I don't even know if it's worth doing this anymore, to be honest. Put him on dying. You don't look 35. How old do I look? I'm not 35. I'm 34. I might be 35 for 10 more days. <laughs> About 25? No. Don't look that old. All right, we got what, two more bosses? Good at 2830. You look a good 2830. I'll take it. As the winds of that from within the nation persist, 
We shall raise 10,000 waves to purify this world and usher in a new era. Church outfits going up if you need. Ah, uh, no, not really. I don't really have any use for Krons right now because Debo enhancing is super dead. Thank you, though. Someday I'll start sniping more crowns again for Fallen God and stuff, but. Funny, your BDO character is looking like a wife or whatever. I meant to tell you that ages ago. Did I just go the wrong way? Shoot. I did go the wrong way. Oh, man. Tail cosmetic, or is it like an item? Uh, it's part of the outfit. Minute 30. That wasn't exactly a good time, but is what it is. I'm trying to go to Pitman Dying. Yeah, we got one more. Catch you next stream. Alright, Jason, we'll see you later. Have a good one. And it's more so like it's a costume or she's part animal. No, it's a costume. It's like her outfit. If I put her in a different outfit, she wouldn't have. That's the way to that. It's like the classic Kunoichi outfit. I think it's supposed to be a fox. I'm not sure. Stuck on everything. Right. I think that was all of our Black Shrine. That's good. Nine minutes left to spare on our map. I'm actually using the Archaeologist map a surprisingly large amount ever since Pit of Undying came into the game. I farmed that thing up years ago and I like never used it. But I'm actually super glad I have it now. It's super useful. Ooh! Distos! Okay, okay. Are you gonna are you gonna actually become viable again? They're teasing it. I wouldn't say they're good, but they're teasing it. How are um Dawn's? 
Ooh, Dawn's looking sexy. Okay, how about Vaha? No, Vaha's trash. Use one tap to pen phone god. You don't even know what a pen phone god is. Oh man. Oh, at least I have two revivers. All right. Let me check some numbers. How are Leighton's? Not great. Could be worse. If I started BDO, I'd be one tapping in no time. Try hard. Well, probably so. Boosted. And you've really got me thinking, maybe I should start using Balkan in more against um, Narcy's teams. Does Kaja cleanse the fear? I don't even remember. Or not Kaja, Ankora. Yeah, she does. I think Valken's fun to watch. I've never used him in reality. I used to use him. That's oh, that's part of the reason why I um I don't use him much anymore. He has the same problem that uh. What's his name? Timmet has. Where I used him to counter Necrit. <laughs> and nobody runs Necrit anymore because Narciss made Necrit irrelevant. And... Armand's also counters Necrit super hard. The secret skill is AoE would be a different situation. I think it actually can work fine. I'm, I, I'm, there might be worth using. How much turn meter? The problem is, is he doesn't get enough turn meter, right? He gets 50% turn meter. He, he needs to go before the Narcissus does. But 75% turn meter. Mm. Maybe. Valk is better Blood Gorge in a way just because of the affinity. Um, they kind of were a little different. He, he hits way harder than Blood Gorged as well. Like, Valkanen's attack hits really, really hard without ignoring defense. The ignoring defense is just a benefit. I do wonder. You know what I should do? When, when they're running Ancora. Lockout? Narcy's A3. Hold on. What happens if you use Valken against Siegfriend? I need to see if there's any Siegfrinds in the arena. I know, because it had some weird mechanics with... Blood Gorged. 
or with um Goffred, where it would kind of ignore the Go Goffred passive. Damn, did I finish all of Cursed City hard except for the stages I except for how do I have left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Got eleven stages. Wait, which awakening? Oh, I haven't completed this awakening stage yet. Which should be easy. I just have to get there. Oh man, it's a fat amount of energy for that. Wait, was that Alika? What oh, is Alika? I guess I'll just go run normal. <clears throat> My league is going to get mastery soon. Doing Dithy now and did Rathalos before. Nice. Yeah, I'm reconsidering. Um, I'm reconsidering building Rathalos. For my Nightmare Hydra team this time. I wonder if I built Mithrala. I wonder if I drop. Yeah, I build. I drop Quintus and. Newt and I run Mithrala. Wait, is Mithrala? No, mate. Is Mithrala getting used in my other team? Hold on. Who do I even run? Did full master and Rathos, then didn't build them because my brutal team decided to do 100 mil? Yeah, I kind of was working on his masteries too and then I just stopped. Did I use. Oh yeah, so I'm using Mithrala and hard. Uh, who can I bring in for increase attack? Oh, you know who I need. New chick. Yastrid. I could run Yastrid, Rathalos. Cause she brings weaken and then we'd have the decrease defense from Michinaki. You want to build Sissia just for the hell of it? Yeah, I should build Yastrid. I've got a lot of Lego books at the moment. For the first time in a while, I've had Lego books that I don't like already have committed to. Who's your burner for Rathalos, Michi? Uh, Sulfurion. Sulfurion's my healer reviver. in uh, Nightmare. And he's fantastic even without the burns. So it's like, not it doesn't feel like a, like I'm giving something up to bring him in, you know? Like he's not like, you know, you bring in Artak and you're like, ugh, burns just don't cut it in Hydra anymore. But Sulfurion is like, he's there for the heal. Like his, the burns are just to enable his healing and his turn meter boosting and his reviving and all that, so. 
yeah, he, and, he, and he puts it up without the need for, um, or he can put it up through Poison Cloud. So he dramatically reduces the need for block buffs. That's part of my problem too, though, is I have to manual to get the block buffs from, um, what's her name? I don't know. The other thing too is I'm going to get Marius and Marius is probably better than Rathalos. What was I doing? Is there anything left I need to do? Not really. I kind of finished everything I need to do in raid today. Until the 3v3 starts. I can do some classic arena still. I think if I got the new um, the new High Elf Lego, Royal, whatever, I wonder if they're going to do a guaranteed for him. Marius is probably another month or two away. Yeah, but I'm not necessarily in a hurry. It's like I already, I already do enough to get like 2 billion in Hydra Clash on, on auto, just from normal and hard. So it's like I've just been letting my Nightmare do like 100 mil and then just like calling it a day, which is what it does like on auto. Five downgrades. That sucks, Chircoon. Five downgrades on Debo. That's rough. You know what shocks me is distos are still... Who's buying distos at 342? I think I'm aware of using my Marius. I know Shogun for sure. Yeah, he's probably going to be really good in Shogun. go do some of these Voltaras. Uh, I gotta get out of here pretty soon anyway. Um, yeah. Where did Dawn Earrings even drop? I don't remember. Cyclops? Oh, is that why they're not maxed? Forgot to actually grab the accessories I was going to grab. Or did I put them all in the storage? I did.
Hmm. <laughs> you know what I just thought of? You could do a really interesting strat with Ancora and Valkanen, where Valkanen kills the target and then Ancora revives it with full turn meter or with uh, all of its abilities reset. That would be really interesting. <laughs> Um, oh, we can do this. Actually, how are Tongue Red Belts even doing? Yeah, they're okay at set. Theory Crafting Tryhard. Ah, I keep putting them in the wrong storage. Be good for Armand's Warlord. Go first. Use their skills. Valk kills and then Quora revives. It actually strong as fuck. Yeah, it could be kind of interesting. Like you go against a Crixia and you lock her out and then she resets all the abilities and then you nuke the Warlord and then lock him out again. <laughs> could be, I don't know. It could be kind of interesting. So we know stone skin, they get wrecked, also makes Valk's second turn come faster. Yeah. How's Reblath fail stack farming now with the guaranteed pity change? How's Reblath fail? Uh, it doesn't really change it that much, to be perfectly honest. You just get some extra like tries and duos and stuff to work with, but it's not like a huge deal either way. Some of these, see if any of these are worth selling. Zero and core in four piece, uh, six piece. Probably don't really listen to rap much, do you? A lot of beef going on lately. Uh, nope, not much. All right, let me call it good on that. I need to, I need to do some math. That's going to have to happen later. Because uh, it's time for me to head out here. Let's see, we're going to have to go find someone to raid. What's up, Hollowskate? Ah. Who is online? Hmm, the Byrog's online. Streaming till G48 gathering. Oh, he's been going for 16 hours. He's not even gathering. What's he doing? He's grinding. Oh, for low power consumption? Wait a second. All right. Let's go say hi to Byrog. Thank you all for hanging out with me tonight. I will probably be back online tomorrow. Good night, fam. Six piece even better. See you, Bob. Good night. See you next time. See you later, Nathan. All right, we're out. 
Make sure I spell his name right. Myrog Han, two A's. All right, here we go. Peace.